Okay, let's talk about everyone's favorite thing, and that is percent. Now, of course, right away, some of you are saying, no, I actually enjoy things <laughs> other than mathematics and percent. Listen, I was just trying to be a little bit funny, but you got to know percent whether it's your favorite thing or not, because it's absolutely everywhere, okay? It's in all of our lives, every day, throughout the day, you can't escape percent, okay? Because prices are going up and down, right? Everyone pretty much, well, I'm kind of thinking most of you out there, uh, unless you're too young, you may have a credit card or some sort of loan and there's an interest rate. Uh, you know, you just can't escape this little symbol, okay? This symbol is absolutely everywhere. So for those of you who learn math or have learned math and said, oh, when am I ever going to use this stuff? Well, okay, if it's like advanced algebra, that might be one thing, okay? And by the way, <laughs> you still use that stuff in uh, other type of problems, but percent everyone uses. And especially right now what's going on, uh, of course, uh, hopefully, uh, you read the news and have some basic knowledge of what's going on around you. Even if you haven't seen the news, you are experiencing inflation, right? Things are getting more expensive, and uh, that's a, another topic uh, altogether. But let's take a look at the percent of inflation and how this is really measured because a lot of students or a lot of people confuse this. Right? I want to make sure that you truly understand this. So let's take a look at an example uh, let's say gas, all right, that went from $3.50 up to $4. Now, some of you out there, depending on what state you're in, might be like, well, my gas is at $6 or $5, well, whatever it is it is, but this is a pretty good jump in prices. So this could be gas, it could be the price of whatever, you know. Um, but let's talk about the percent of inflation, but the percent of inflation really is a percent of increase, okay? And a lot of students, a lot of people confuse this, so we're going to make sure there, uh, you know, there is no confusion on your part, okay? So you can measure this stuff and have a pretty good sense of how to use your math skills in real life. So we're going to get to this in just one second, uh, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here in about a week. Uh, but I also have many, many uh, courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED high set task, uh, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACER, ALEX exam, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam like the Praxis, all those exams and many, many uh, more, they all have math on them, okay? The math is important. So if you don't do well in the math section, you do not do well on exams, so I can help you prepare. Just go to my site, check out my full course catalog. Now, if I don't have your exam, drop me a line and I will help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with homeschooling. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously I help those of you who are just having a tough time in the current math courses. Now, uh, uh, if you are truly serious about wanting to improve in mathematics or learn math, then you got to be serious about this. And if uh, this is the first time uh, you're watching one of my videos, I always stress note-taking, okay? I, I teach math. That's my passion. But when I'm teaching math, I want to, like, you know, teach you how to be successful in math so you can learn math on your own, Okay. And the way to do that is you got to take great math notes. Okay, so whoever is your instructor, you got to be paying attention. And I've been teaching math for decades. One thing I could point to with consistency for success is note taking. There hasn't been a student that I've uh, taught um, that I know of, uh, and this is over decades of teaching math that have d has done outstanding without having great math notes. All right. So if you're having a tough time, take great math notes. Things will get better. Okay. Now. The reverse is true, okay? For those students who are like, yeah, I take good notes uh, in and out of when I'm looking at my cell phone, okay? I look at my cell phone uh, for <clears throat> uh, maybe like five minutes, and then uh, the next five minutes I pay attention to the teacher, and then I kind of switch back and forth. What you're really doing is your focus is going like this, okay? So you're really going to, at most, have an average understanding. So you're gonna end up with grades like this, where uh, the reality is if you're staying focused all the time, you'll end up with grades like that. So you've got to determine what kind of grades you want, okay? If you want great, outstanding grades, you got to keep your level of focus high all the time, okay? All right, now, in the meantime, you still need something to study from as you're improving your 
math notes, you can use my math notes. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so if you think you know how to do this problem, you should use a calculator as well. Okay, go ahead and determine uh, the percent of increase, and that, of course, would be basically like the percent of inflation. So let's get to it now. If you don't want to see the solution just yet, yeah, pause the video, but I'm going to go ahead and get into it right now. And most people are okay up to this point. So they're like, okay, uh, things went from 350 or gas went to 350 to four dollars so most people are like okay four dollars minus 350 or four minus 350 that's a 50 percent increase okay so almost everybody kind of starts off this way now here is where the trouble begins when you're trying to determine the percent of increase or the percent of inflation uh people don't know okay should i take that 50 percent or that or that 50 cents should i d can i should i find the percentage uh, with this four dollars, or should I find the percentage um, with this 350? Okay, so where do I compare this increase? Okay, so uh, prices went up 350. Should I do this or this? Which one is going to tell me the percent of increase? Right. So this is a little interesting twist in this problem. Okay, most of you could do this, but this is where the confusion lies. All right. So now. If you have your answer and you're ready to kind of see what the actual <laughs> uh, correct uh, solution is, let's get to it. And the actual thing you need to do is choose this one. Okay. When you find it, let's go back here and I'll get into this. When you find the difference, you always start with the original amount. We're talking about things went up. But they went up from what was the what was the baseline? Well, this was the original amount, and it went up to this. So you have to compare the increase with the original amount. Okay, so if you keep that in mind, then you're going to be perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and do this now. So when we take this point five uh, or fifty cents, point five zero, and we're finding the percent of increase, we're going to have to compare the change with the original amount. Now this is just a basic percent problem. If you need more help with percent, I have tons of videos on percent in my pre-algebra playlist. But when you use your uh, nice little calculator, you go point, uh, 0 0.50 divided by 3.50, you get point, uh, 0.1428. There's some other decimals there, uh, but we'll just, or other digits, we'll just kind of just keep it like this. So this is my answer, but I want the percent. So I'm gonna have to multiply this guy by 100 or move the decimal point over two times, okay? And when I do that, I get 14.28%, uh, okay? So that is the percent of increase. So let's take a look at, by, by the way, if you got this right, then let me go ahead and give you a nice, awesome, uh, uh, happy face with them, the good old fashioned 1984 Mohawk with you know, not so much hairspray. We used too much hairspray back in those good old 1980s. But anyways, nice job, A+. Plus. Okay, that means that, you know, you have a pretty good sense of uh, percent. Okay, but let's go ahead and take a look and just, you know, double verify this answer. So if gas was 350, okay, and it went up 14.28%, okay, our answer should be $4. But let's go ahead and look at this problem differently. So let's say I have gas is uh, at 350 or currently at 350, but just went up 14.28%. Uh, so this is our inflation, right? Inflation is rising prices. What's the new price of gas? Well, what we need to do is determine what's 14.28% of 350. Okay, so how do I find a percent of a number? Well, I got to take this percent and write it as a decimal. So that means I got to move the decimal point over two places to the left or divide by 100. So again, if you need help with basic percent uh, beyond this, if you don't understand percent, then this video might be not the right video for you to start with. Go back and look at somewhere. Uh, I have tons of, again, uh, videos on percent in my uh, pre-algebra playlist. But uh, so anyways, 14.28% is the same thing as decimal point. 1428, and then I'm going to multiply that by that 350, and I get approximately 0.4998. So uh, let's go ahead and round that up to 0 0.50, and that is our 50 cents in terms of uh, our increase. Okay, so 14.28% uh, of 350 
we're going to call it 50 cents. So gas went up 50 cents. So if it started at 350 and it went up 50 cents, well, 350 plus that 50 cents is going to get us up to $4. Okay. Just as we knew when we started off doing this uh, problem. So, you know, when you watch the news or when you're just, you know, uh, shopping or comparison, just have a good sense of your surrounding, use your knowledge of percent. Okay. You just don't, you know, uh, take things by, you know, to me, I like to double check things. All right. For you, you should be able to do the same, right? You don't have to be using any advanced algebra or calculus to figure this stuff out. If there's one math topic that you should have, well, you know, like total you know, mastery of that is the percent because it's absolutely everywhere in your life. Okay. Whether it's inflation, finances, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And hopefully this video has cleared some things up about the percent of increase. And by the way, this works the same way for the percent of decrease as well. Okay. All right. So if this little video was in some slight way enjoyable, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for uh, 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, uh, basic to advanced math on my channel, all there for you. My mission, my goal is to try to make math clear and understandable. So if you like my teaching style, I have a ton of free uh, uh, videos there, all for you to take advantage of. And of course, I'm posting new content all the time, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.